Hello everyone, welcome back and in today's video, we'll discuss this problem from J Advanced 2022 and this is question number 11 from paper 1 uh, and this question is based on the topic of, you could say fluid mechanics and thermodynamics. Okay, so this question isn't really challenging but the thing is, in order to solve this problem, you need to be knowing a thing that is out of your syllabus. So if you want to solve option C, that is the height of the chimney, then you need to be knowing a modified version of the Bernoulli's theorem and we'll, we are going to be discussing that in this video. Okay, so let's begin with the discussion. Usually in textbooks, Bernoulli's theorem is derived using the work energy theorem, right? In this video, I'm going to derive it using an alternative approach and that is by using the force method. Okay, and let's say this, this line rep over here represents a streamline and we are ensuring that flow is steady. That is the velocity at any particular point on the streamline does not change with time. Okay, the, velo the velocity does change from position to position in a streamline, but the velocity at one particular position does not change with time. And, and that is the meaning of steady flow. That is basically that the velocity is simply a function of the distance traveled along the streamline uh, and it is independent of the time. Or we could simply say that the derivative of velocity with respect to time is zero. Okay guys, so now let's assume a fluid element whose distance along the streamline is ds and whose cross-sectional area is da. And the pressure at this end, let's assume it to be p plus dp and the pressure at this end, let's assume it to be p. And then we also have to consider the weight of the fluid element. Let's assume the acceleration A of the element is in this direction, tangential to the streamline. Okay, so now let's write the force balance equation along the streamline. Okay, so the driving force of this element along the streamline is P dA minus P plus dP into dA and the component of weight minus W sine theta and the weight of the element, I can write it as the density of the element times its volume, right? And what is the volume of it? It is going to be dS times dA and you have to multiply it with G and also sine theta. This, this, is, this would be the net force acting on the element and this is equal to the mass of the element, which is rho times dS times dA times its acceleration. Okay guys, so now the acceleration is going to be a function of the position, right? Which means the acceleration will be V dV upon dS. Okay, so now we can cancel out the dA terms. Okay guys, so now rearranging the terms a bit, what you obtain is dP divided by rho plus G dS sine theta plus V dV equals zero. So now the thing is if ds sine theta is simply going to be dz or let's just name it as dH for our case. So I'm gonna replace this ds sine theta with dH right or the vertical height of the streamline now all i now what i'm going to do is integrate this expression now if we assume that the density is variable or the flow is compressible then we cannot take the row out of the integral right because clearly the density would vary with the pressure and temperature so what i'm so i'm going to leave that integral as it is because we are not clear about the variation of density and uh, integral dh is simply going to be h and integral VdV is going to be V squared divided by 2 and this would be equal to some constant C. Now usually when we derive Bernoulli's theorem, this rho is invariant, right? Because it's a fluid. So we assume that the density does not vary significantly and we can take it out of the integral and then it will take the usual Bernoulli's theorem form. In the current question, as we'll see in a bit, the density is actually varying. So we cannot bring it out of the integral. In fact, we have to evaluate this expression depending upon the case that is given to us. Just so to take some, take a few examples, if it is given that the process is isothermal and the fluid in picture is an ideal gas, then we then you might be familiar with the formula that PM equals rho r. So in this case, as the temperature is constant, you can write rho as p divided by some constant. So if you substitute for rho as p divided by some constant, you as you can see, this will take some logarithm form, right? So like likewise, you have to solve depending upon the situation that is given to you. That's how you deal with the compressible flow case. Okay, so that was it for this discussion. Now let's move on to our problem. Okay guys, so let's read the problem statement. So we have an ideal gas whose density is 0.2 kg per meter cube uh, at the inlet. So it enters the chimney uh, whose height is h and it enters at a rate of 0.8 kg per second. So, th so that is going to be the uh, mass flow rate of the gas and it is given to be 0.8 kg per second from its lower end and it escapes through the upper end as shown in the figure. The cross-sectional areas are given in this line and the pressure and the temperature of the gas at the lower end are 600 pascals and 300 Kelvin. And the temperature at the upper end is given to be 150 Kelvin. The chimney is heat insulated so that the gas undergoes adiabatic expansion and the gamma value is given to be two. So the first information is that the process is adiabatic. Okay, so let's try solve this problem um, option by option. So the first option is quite straightforward that they're asking the pressure of the gas at the upper end. And as we know three of the unknowns, we can easily 
solve for the other unknown that is the pressure at the top uh, as a process adiabatic we can write that pv power gamma which is 2 is a constant alternately we can also write t square equal to c times p if i want to write this in terms of temperature and pressure it will be t square equal to c1 times pressure and in terms of density this would be p is equal to c2 times rho squared okay guys so uh, the most useful would be the relation between temperature and pressure right so that would be equation 2 so with that we can say t1 by t2 the whole squared equals p1 by p2 and after solving you'll get the pressure at the topmost point as 150 pascals which means option a is wrong okay now let's move on to the second option so in the second option they're saying they, they require us to find the velocity of the gas at the lower and the upper end so the velocity can be determined from the mass flow rate right so the mass flow rate of the gas uh, with respect to the inlet velocity is going to be rho 1 a1 times v1 right and it's given to be 0 0.8 so as we know rho 1 and v a1 we can solve for v1 easily and it turns out to be 40 meter per second now we know the area of cross section of the upper end but we are missing the density of the gas at the upper end so if we can figure out the density at the top end we'll get the velocity at the top end as well so and that we can get from equation 3 right so from equation 3 the pressure is directly proportional to the square of the density so as the pressure is becoming one fourth when we go from point 0.1 to point 0.2 which means the density would simply become halved one halved right by li simply looking at the proportionality so which basically means the density at the upper end is going to be 0 0.1 kg per meter cube right half of the density at the bottom so uh, and with that we can also disprove option D. so now we can simply find v2 as m dot divided by rho 2 a2 so density is half the area is four times so which means it is half of it so the velocity will come out to be 20 meter per second so option b is perfectly fine okay guys now moving on to option c uh, which is also the thing that was out of your syllabus so for that we have to move on to our modified bernoulli's theorem okay guys, so i'm going to borrow equation 3 and according to that p was equal to c 2 times rho squared. So what we have to do is integrate, evaluate this expression, integral dp divided by rho. And rho is equal to square root of p uh, divided by square root of c2. Okay. So our first term in uh, in the modified Bernoulli just simply evaluates into 2 times square root of p times c2. Now, how do we evaluate c2 guys? So c2 we can easily evaluate using the boundary condition at the inlet. Right? So we know the pressure at the inlet is 600 and the density at the inlet is 0 0.2. So C2 simply becomes 600 divided by 0 0.04. So I'm, not, I'm just not evaluating it because I think the values are just going to get cancelled out. So let's just assume a streamline between the end 1 and end 2 and we can simply apply our Bernoulli theorem. Okay, so the first term was square root of PC, right? So the pressure at end 1 is 600 pascals times C2 plus V square by 2 and the velocity at the inlet was 40 meter per second. So this would be 40 square by 2. Let's assume the N1 is a zero potential energy level. So this would be equal to square root of the pressure at the second end is 150. I'm just going to write it as 600 by 4. The velocity at the exit is 20 meter per second. Height of the N2 from N1 is H. So let's just simply write it as GH. And after calculations, the value simplifies into 360 meters. So, and which means option C is also wrong. So I don't really know what was the official key, but I believe if you solve this using usual Bernoulli theorem, then you will get phi 90 as a correct answer. So I don't know if they gave that as a correct answer or not, but it's actually wrong. Okay, so that was it for this video. If you enjoyed the video, do like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.